smell that right? It does indeed feel good to breathe the air back home in Omaha. I'm still pissed off that I spent money last week on trophy winning chili peppers and they haven't gotten me any trophies yet. But yeah. on a lighter note, yes, Matt, it is. <laughs> back to Omaha, the Tigers go. I mean, that's a good alternative, right? You, you, yeah, you know, I'll, I'll trade you lost some money on some chili yeah, peppers? Yeah, or? yeah, yeah I'll, I'll, I'll cut my losses, you know. My ROI may not pay off, but uh, I'll take this any day. Absolutely. <laughs> Been doing this too long. <laughs> Welcome to episode 90. Big 90, oh, man. Nine. Wow. Oh, we are close to 100. We're, I'm sure we're going to have all the shenanigans playing. Oh, yes. Awesome, I'm sure. Absolutely. But a couple segments tonight. We'll go ahead and, I guess, recap the Super Regional. And then, of course, we'll get into the World Series preview because our team's still in it. Some other teams aren't. But that makes, what, three SEC teams, if I'm not mistaken? Four. 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 Us, Florida, Vanderbilt, and Arkansas. And correct? Arkansas tied the College World Series record for a conference. I believe it was the ACC that set it. SEC had a chance to break it, but uh, well, some, we would have been playing some some fake SEC team couldn't cut the mustard. We would have been playing the the Texas A&M Aggies had they pulled out the win last night. What was it? Fourteen innings. Sixteen. Sixteen. Wow. I after third sleep. After, after thirteen. After thirteen, I was like, yeah, I'm going to bed. Yeah, too much. But uh, sixteen innings, game three in Fort Worth. The Horned Frogs pull it out 5-4 against the Aggies. Uh, a, a slobber knocker of a series. You know, TCU blew yeah. them out in the first game. and A&M fought back in game, game back two, in game one two. by one run. And it, it seems like TCU, Matt, you said it last week about a different squad, but TCU seems like destiny's on their side. They just won't go down without a fight. They, they came back yes. down 8-1 against NC State in the regional. They, you know... They fought back last night to and then to win in, in extra innings. And they have a pitching staff that the Tigers, I don't think, have seen much closer of a top-notch pitching staff than TCU does. But first, I'm getting ahead of myself. <laughs> That's all good. Let's, uh, let's go back to the weekend. I have listened to Hawthorne's call of Saturday night's walk-off oh. <laughs> probably like 25 times since Sunday. Yeah, it was kind of funny. They talked to Chambra after the game, and one of the – Reporters in the the national press conference because they do that for regionals. And right, such. right. They, they asked him, uh, so you, you kind of feel like Warren Morris and Shambro. I don't know if he almost took a little offense to it as, as if it was like, why are you compare me to Warren Morris? I mean, it almost degrades Warren Morris because his was for national title. Goes it's more along the lines of Tyler Moore in the, in the Stony Brook Super Regional. <laughs> he was trying to say make it a little lighter. He's like, it's like, come on, man. Warren Morris won a national title for his. I just, oh, want, a re- yeah, right. I just want a super regional game. But. All I did is win one game. I didn't advance us any further. All I did was give us, you know, one leg up going into game two. I mean, you know, we'll never forget Warren Morris. I think it was 16 years yesterday or 16 years Sunday. I think it was yesterday. Is it, if, if you're watching live today. June 8th. It was June. I think it was June 7th. I could stand corrected, you, though. You're right. I think it was June 7th. June 7th. So it be two days. days, days, days 16 days, years. Losing track of days today. Too. No. Today's already six months. It is what it is. But yeah, Ryan, I think uh, one of the most impressive things from this weekend was that Lange and Poche again both had two very solid starts, and it takes pressure off a, an LSU offense that, for the first time in the entire NCAA tournament, finally got going in maybe the last three innings of the game, too. Yeah. I mean, they've been ice cold. I, you know, I, I want to step back because I don't think they've been so much ice cold as it is. They've faced some really good pitchers. They have. They UNC have. Wilmington in, the, in both the 2-0 two, the two wins, UNC Wilmington had a stout bullpen, and, and ULL on Saturday night threw their ace, kept us in check. You know, LSU managed to squeeze out three runs, and, of course, the game-winning fourth run. I think that's the kicker, though, is late in the game, we are taking advantage of any mistake that the pitchers tend to make on the hill against us, and it paid off. Sunday night in the six three in the six three win against ULL, heading into Omaha, I had a brain fart for a second. Heading into Omaha, we've seen the Tigers in recent history have trouble with aces on the mound. You know the likes of UCLA and UNC a couple of years ago. It'll be interesting because the balls are different now. The bats are a little bit different now, so the yes. games have, t- have changed a tad bit. I I like the six runs. I'll take six runs any game. Six runs should win you every Six ball runs game. should win you every ball game. Six runs pitch. and 10, 12 hits should win you every ball game. Four runs in a close one normally wins you a ball game. The cardiac cats, though, <laughs> leaving us down to the wire. Yeah, and they, and they beat some good pitching again. Uh, ULL is going to be a, a 
pretty solid team. They're to be reckoned with they, next they season. They have Absolutely. three freshman stars. Leger, he he's pretty good. If he, if he improves that stamina more, he's going to be a very dangerous pitcher. He, yeah, he lost it in the eighth. Mm-hmm. He lost it in the eighth, and that's where we took advantage. Yep. But Tigers were able to pull it off at home, and... It could be! It might be! It is! Tigers win! <laughs> yeah, I've listened to it a few times. All right. Well, that was Jim Hawthorne's last games in the box. You know, Man. Kind of, kind of an emotional weekend. Packed house, of course, as usual, and it'll be the same way in, in Omaha as well with a huge tired contingency, whether they're coming from Baton Rouge, the alumni bases, or in Omaha alone, as they are Omaha's adopted sons. This is true. As they are very excited. In fact, I saw a news story earlier today from one of the Omaha TV stations. Basically, all they were doing was talking about LSU, how, how much more drilling goes in the city when LSU's there, especially the businesses. Oh, they! I'm sure the ballrooms and restaurants thrive quite well. <laughs> when uh, the purple and gold Especially army rolls Barrett's into town. barley corn out there, the official LSU bar out in Omaha, it will be jam packed again. Looking forward to see it. But we'll be right back, and of course, we'll preview the LSU TCU game. <laughs> We're back on episode 90 of the Matt Ryan Show, and right, it's time to talk some World Series. So LSU will take on TCU Horn Frogs. Number who, seven national seed. The seven national seed, one of the, I think, four national seeds to make it. Let's see, Miami and Florida were two, LSU and TCU were two. Uh, Vanderbilt wasn't, actually. They nope. beat Illinois. Louisville, Louisville didn't make they it. thought they were going. Fulton went down. And then, of course, Arkansas and Virginia. Neither which. Neither so one four of the eight. Four of the eight this year. And I believe the only repeat team from last year is TCU. Yes. But Louisville would have made it three in a row. That would have been. Yeah, that would have been three if they would have made it. And then, Fullerton had something to say about that. Yeah, and you had LSU, of course, there two years ago. So a couple familiar teams, but a little bit of uh, new blood in there as well. It'll be really oh, interesting. Oh, sorry, Vanderbilt, defending well, national I champs. I mean, yeah, well, the defending national so, champs. So, but, three, you know, three. Yeah, it's it's yeah. kind of Vanderbilt and LSU and most recently Florida added into this conversation. Yes. You kind of expect in yeah. Omaha. You know, Vanderbilt's been a shoe-in for the past four or five years. They've had one of the most outstanding bullpens. And now their offense is really clicking. Number one overall pick in Dansby Swanson. This guy's an outstanding shortstop. It's hard for me to say this, but he's probably better than Bregman. And it's very hard to... To say anybody's better than Bregman, but the guy's a beast. He's been carrying Vanderbilt's offense and his defensive fielding percentage. I want to say somewhere in the nine nineties. This guy, this guy's incredible. Granted, number one overall pick, Bregman was number two. Um, Florida brings a lot of good pitching to the table. Their bullpen was one of the best in the SEC. I want to say only behind us, yeah. maybe us and Vanderbilt. Of course, LSU. We know what LSU brings. Miami looked like a, a pretty powerful offensive team, but then again... They had the most cupcake schedule to get Yeah, there. they played Columbia. I, you know, kudos to Columbia and Ivy League school for making it to the regionals, but these guys beat the brakes off of them in Miami. And, then, I mean, and VCU gave Miami all they could handle. It's not to discredit VCU at all. Two Force. games. Two games. Two but, games, but they didn't get them. Yeah, it wasn't a pushover like they had in the regionals. Um, Illinois, very disappointing super regional showing. And Vanderbilt, I mean... They, what are you they, gonna do when you got Vanderbilt coming into the Defending national champs, two first round pitchers. Vanderbilt has the the pitcher staff to to go all the way. They really do. Louisville disappointed me. I was pulling for Louisville. That one was a little shocking. Fullerton yeah. is especially at Louisville. Yeah, and Fullerton's catching fire right now. A, a team that just it wasn't the Fullerton we're used to seeing this year. But when they, the Titans are hot, the Titans are they, hot. They're hot right now, and uh, it'll be an interesting matchup with them and Vanderbilt. Both both pitchers, their aces, I believe, were first round picks. Yeah. In fact, uh, oh, in fact, their ace was the. I'll tell you what, he was a second round pick or like compensatory first round pick, but he was the uh, the Astros fourth pick uh, of the draft because they had I think four in the top sixty or something, something like, like that. that. Yeah. So you got you know two studs thrown in that game for sure, but quite a few. I think there was like three LSU players that went to the to the Astros through the course of the draft. Yeah, I mean, two. Let's see, you had Bregman, besides Bregman, and then you had what's his uh, Zach Pearson. That's it. Pearson, Pearson was the other one. Pearson and then, was the other uh, one. I believe they may have had one more. I'm drawing a blank on it right now. But well, heading into heading into Omaha. Uh, correct me, Matt. Sunday at two. Sunday at two o'clock. It'll be game three of the tournament. It starts on Saturday, of course. But L should be the first game of the day on Sunday, taking on TCU Horn Frogs, who. Probably top to bottom have the best pitching staff out of the eight teams there. They have four starters, Ryan, including the midweek starter, 
who have all thrown at least 70 innings this year and all have an ERA under three, including I think one of them has an ERA under two. I yep. want to say. The, I, I want to say his ace, their ace, excuse me, Mitchell Traver, who's probably who we'll end up seeing um, – on the Saturday afternoon game against LSU's own Alex Lane, well, actually, was declared. Actually, I thought Preston Morrison was going. I haven't heard anything. I feel, I, I'm just going on assumptions right now, based on okay. ERA and based on based on. Statistics. I think it's Morrison, but then again, you know, if it is either way, you know, Preston Morrison or Mitchell Traver, who is a, a paltry 2.5 ERA. <laughs> Preston Morrison <laughs> threw nine in the third on uh, in game two, yeah, of the regional and kept. No, 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 no. In game three. You sure it was last night? Game two didn't go to extras, did it? Game two didn't go no. to extras. Game it was game three. Go. This kid threw nine in the third of incredible, incredible dealing and never hit 100 pitches. Nine in the third innings and didn't hit 100 pitches. It means Some it. pitchers don't hit seven innings. This guy can deal. He's got an ERA of right around 2.5, and he's their third guy. Uh, overall win-loss of 11-3 and three on the year. I was watching him throw, and he calmly hits you with 92, 91, and a slider that the bottom falls out of. It's nasty. You know, the good thing is, is these guys played a long three-game series, so LSU's going to have a lot of things to look at and kind of, you know, know what to expect coming out of him. But he kept A&M off balance for the majority of the game yesterday. The advantage we have, one, Lang's, be, Lang, excuse me, being the National Freshman Pitcher of the Year, is coming off of eight days rest. Yes. He threw Saturday. He won't throw again until the following Sunday. And Preston Morrison's going to be coming off of six days rest. Two days doesn't sound like a lot, but after you threw nine and a third innings of emotional baseball, could we have a slight advantage? I, you know, that's yet to be determined. But uh, tune in on Sunday. LSU is going to have their hands full. Yeah, this is not going to be a pushover game one. And then another thing that's going to be something in fact, Lange is going to go game one, obviously. For yeah, the, guaranteed. The Tigers, and you'll have Poche going Tuesday for whenever that game. But Lange is going to be facing a TCU lineup, of course, led by Cody Jones, who batted over 370 this year. But yeah. TCU also has five left-handed batters they can put in a nine lineup, and Lange is a righty. I could see that same lineup as you saw against Texas A&M going against Lange. You know, if you're – a stats guy and really believe in that righty righty or lefty lefty matchup. You know, maybe it may see something a little different. But is TCU used to seeing a guy that can hit ninety five consistent, not for an inning, but for nine innings, right. right? So that'll be interesting to see. And of course, Lange has his complimentary pitches as well. The curveball that, in my in my opinion, Matt, that curveball is Lange's strength. Right. Yes, a, a ninety five mile an hour fastball is nice, especially when you command the strike zone with it. But that 12-6 curveball, it starts at your neck, and before it crosses the plate, it's at your knees. And you, what what happened? Where yeah. did it go? And it cruises in at 78, 83, sometimes even gets it up to 85. And, you know, you saw ULL on Saturday night stumped for the majority of the game with Lang, when Lang's on with that curveball. It's dangerous. But, Matt, I'm glad you mentioned the A&M series. Mm-hmm. One thing Lang does, and it's great to have as a pitcher, is first pitch strikes. Yeah. That could be to his detriment should TCU jump on him early because like A&M did, they jumped on him early and we saw what happened. Exactly. And then, of course, we were talking about the new ball earlier. It's the first year of the new ball at uh, TD Ameritrade Park, a park that's in the opposite direction of the old Rosenblatt. The wind was always going to be blowing in. You get the nice skyline, of course. But right. It's a pitcher's ballpark now. It's a big ballpark. Will the extra 10, 15 feet off of a so-called solid hit make a difference? We'll find out for sure, of course, for this World Series. And I'm curious to see how Lange can handle the pressure of a World Series start now. He's done regional, super regional, SEC tournament. In a way, he's kind of had friendly home confines. Now, LSU will have a more of a contingency than anybody. The only team that we even have somewhere close will probably be Arkansas because right. they do travel well as well. TC won't have much there. So if anything, that may help him, you know, in being in his first start. But it is also a World Series start, Ryan. You're going to have 25,000 fans there and a national television audience. You know, I don't think 25,000 fans is going to shake Lang. No. I really don't. Lang looked like he had ice in his veins on Saturday night. And, and here's another thing that's going to be interesting is that the game time temperatures usually all can get really hot. But... It's going to be around 80, even at 2 o'clock. So, 
the that's, fact that that's right exactly you know, what he needs. Especially you know him pitching in the last couple of weekends in the dead heat of South Louisiana, that's got to help. Absolutely. Maybe get a little bit more zip on that fastball. And maybe get more more zip for a longer period of time. And a ball will carry a little more in that kind of weather, too. You know, we saw in 13 against UNC, uh, against, excuse me, against yeah. North Carolina and against UCLA, mm -hmm. that even with the big bats we had, you know, with Ray Rhymes and, and Katz, if I'm not mistaken, yeah. correct, you know, we had these guys who could yoke it when they hit it, hit it solid, and in TD Ameritrade, it just wouldn't travel. Yeah, the only run was Katz's one, and, and I mean, Alex Box saved it's a 400-foot home run, and it barely got over the fence. I mean, it, the, they, Granted, that was with the older balls. They, <laughs> they dropped the seams down a little bit, so they do carry a little bit better in the air. New, new ball with Barr has three home runs in that game. I mean, that gives you... I mean, yeah, yeah, Barr's on the bat very well, but TD Ameritrade Park is where balls go to die at the warning, tra warning tracks. With pitchers Park. You know, so what? should Lang be dealing? I don't think TCU really has the power to push it out the park. You know, their best hitters don't have anything more than what yeah. I want to say between five and twelve home runs. And yeah, twelve's a lot in college, but you know, I don't think L there, there's no gorilla more, ball here. Elshu has more more uh, bats, that's power. for sure. TCU, I think, overall has the better pitching staff. If we're just going top to bottom yeah. here. Be interested to see what happens here. TCU has the experience from last year. They've been in Omaha. We have some of, some of that LSU team has been in Omaha from two years ago as well. We have Kenazaro. Yeah, you have, you know, it's gonna be interesting. We've see. stolen more bases this year successfully than we attempted, if I'm not mistaken, over the past two seasons. Something like that. And if LSU gets on base in Omaha, they're gonna they're run. gonna run. They're gonna it's run. do or die. They, they'll test TCU's catcher for sure. Who do we play on Tuesday? What's the other we, bracket? We play the winner of Vanderbilt and Fullerton if we win. And, of course, loser. Loser. Same, loser. Same. Okay. That, that's our bracket. And, of course, the other side is the and SEC. Yike, that's a tough draw. The other side is the SEC-ACC challenge with, yeah. of course, Arkansas and Virginia and Florida and Miami. Ooh, that's going to be a good one. Mm -hmm. But that's the Saturday games, of course, and LSU's bracket will be the so Sunday game. So, no matter what, LSU will play Tuesday in game two. If they lose, they'll play in the afternoon. If they win, they'll play at night. If we win game one, or get, well, technically game three, mm -hmm. if we win, we play Tuesday at 7 o'clock. At 7 p.m. Yes. We win that, we're 2 0, we get a few days you're off. You're off till Friday. Oh, and then nice. it's, you go 2 0, you're in the huge driver's seat. Then it comes down to, you have, if you go like Maneri did last time in Omaha, for whatever, or not, uh, in the, the 09 run, in right. Omaha, from what I remember, if Lange doesn't. Wear himself out too much on Sunday. He could pitch on Friday on short rest. But we call it short rest. That's Major League Baseball rest there. Four yeah, days. Pretty much, yeah. Then it gets really interesting after that. Safe Oops. throws. Safety throw. Game one of the championship series, which would be on Monday, if you get past Friday without any blemish, you can go poche. You can go whole staff in two, and then you could have lanes for a third. If it, if it gives you, wow. you keep winning, you could potentially throw lanes three times. Or... You go whole staff in game in, in the third game on Friday. If you get past that, now if you lose it, you have another chance on Saturday. Right. It becomes do or die. You probably go lanes or draws. But say if you do it with whole staff, because the other team does have to beat you twice, they're going to be – and they had to play Thursday as well, you know, so they're going to so have that extra drained. game. If you get past that, then you have lanes and post ready to go games one and two in, in, the, in the championship series. It, it's really a lot of strategy involved. One thing I know, Matt, you win – you're in the driver's seat. This is true. You keep winning, you stay in the driver's seat. It starts on Sunday. Exactly. And we'll be right back, and uh, Ryan and I will do our picks for the, the World Series. <laughs> segment of episode 90 of the Matt and Ryan Show, our College World Series preview. Ryan, it's rapid fire time. Uh, how do you want to do this? You want to go game by game and, and maybe pick a winner after that? or yeah, Let's go bracket by bracket. All right. Because really, truthfully, it's hard to go game by game. Right. Because, you know, hypothetically speaking, LSU wins the first game and TCU has to play, say, Fullerton. Right. Then they meet Vanderbilt. Then they meet us again. Mm -hmm. You know, anything could really unfold depending on who's throwing on what day and who matches up with who. Personally, it's just me. 
I'm going to be a homer here, and here's why. Okay. LSU advances out of their out of their side to the World Series championship. Bregman's last year. Mm-hmm. Laird's mother has already confirmed that this will be his last season in Baton Rouge. Okay, so Laird is going. You're going to lose Stevenson. You're losing Stevenson. You're so losing that's Savick. That's four. You're losing Hale. That's five. <laughs> These Tanea, guys have been playing, on the fence. These guys have been playing together for a while. Mm-hmm. They want this, and I think this is the best backup. I think this is the most balanced team we've had since 09. Okay. You've got Poche and you've got Lang, of course. Mm-hmm. You've got a pretty damn good bullpen who's coming together quite well. Reynolds right. is looking great. Pearson looks great. Stallings has finally come back to the Stallings we knew at the beginning of the season. Bug is definitely Bug, involved as the closer. Six, six, delivering the, the heater in the ninth. Not many people are going to be ready for that. I think as far as a pitching staff is concerned, Dunn has these guys ready to roll. I think offensively speaking, like I said, six runs will get you a win almost any game. I think depending on who's on the hill game by game, LSU could potentially put up between four and six runs. And if the basket hot, Matt, you know what happens when the basket hot. The basket is hot. LSU is a very tough team. That's a wrap. That's a wrap. Absolutely. I think they're, they're a different team this year. I'm going to go homer. I'm going to say LSU in the World Series, in the championship series, excuse me. And on the other side of the bracket, Matt, I hate to say this, but I think Florida. I think Florida is the most complete team on the other side. If Florida has shown that their bullpen is second to none, I think Miami's a little overrated. Okay. You know, I think Miami being in a, a weaker conference um, knocked that that national seed with relatively little challenges. I didn't follow them much, but to see who they had to play in their regional, I think kind of said a lot. Yeah. Who's on the other side? Arkansas, uh, Arkansas and, and Virginia. Virginia. Arkansas squeaked in. Arkansas squeaked in. They did. Against the Missouri State team who really and truthfully – had they not been playing at Fayetteville, Missouri State might be in the World Series this year. Missouri State is a national seed for a reason. They were damn good. You know, I think Virginia isn't the team. Not the one that we saw in the series no. a few years back, but they've gotten hot. Yeah, and I mean, if you're hot at the right time. I just think Florida is the more complete team on the other side of the bracket, and I think you're going to see an all-SEC battle for the national championship. Yeah, on, on the... Uh... The opposite side, of LSU. I think Florida destroys Miami. I think Miami is just overrated in that one. And Arkansas just this is where they usually seem to cap out at. I think Virginia is going to upset Arkansas in that one. So I got Florida and Arkansas. I mean, sorry, Florida and Virginia. Virginia. I got Florida mowing over them, and Florida I think potentially goes unblemished on that side. I think they caught they the luck of the. I think they caught the luck of the draw. On yeah, that you're one. right. I don't think they really have a problem. <clears throat> Other side. Call it group of death, murderers row, whatever catchphrase right. you want to use, Ryan. You know, on LSU side, of course, you got defending national champ Vanderbilt. You have LSU. You have a returning um, World Series team in TCU, and you have a historic team in Fullerton who's starting to get hot as well. Uh, the Titans have a couple of national championships, right? I think they have. It's either one or two. I think they have. I mean, but, they have but they have won it before. Three of the four teams on our side of the bracket have a national championship. The only one that doesn't being TCU. TCU. Yeah, they've kind of had more recent success. But uh, with the other game, not going against Vanderbilt. No. Not, not with that one. I think they get past Fullerton. In fact, I think Fullerton goes two and barbecue on that side. Yeah, because they're going to have a tough matchup against TCU. LSU-TCU, this, this is one that's really, really close. I like Lange. He hadn't lost all year. Took the words out of my mouth. So I'm going to go with LSU moving on. If that I'm one. a betting man, I'm going with the undefeated guy. Yeah. Then, of course, it brings it to LSU and Vanderbilt. I'm taking Vanderbilt to go to two and zero. I think LSU does get out of the losers bracket and will beat TCU again and go to that. I think LSU takes a game from Vanderbilt, but I think Vanderbilt moves on in elimination one to go and have Vanderbilt in Florida in the finals, and then this is where it really becomes a toss up. You feeling all right, dude? No, no, I'm feeling all right. I'm being, re- I'm, I'm doing realistic. Oh, uh, typical Matt. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I got LSU losing in the semifinals. If we had a third start, I'd feel a lot more comfortable. Yeah, Amp the bats a little so hard. Now, on paper, and Vegas seems to agree with you. Vegas has LSU winning it all. Really? Yes. Who's second and third? Vanderbilt and Florida. Typical. <laughs> the best conference in baseball this year. And 
But to, to pick a so-called winner is tough. I'm going to go with Florida for the sake of it's so hard to repeat. I think it does go three games, though. Okay. So I'm going to take Florida. Either way, the SEC retains the national championship. I've got the Tigers. Uh, I think, like I said, I think since 09 is the most complete team in Aries mm-hmm. had. Dunn has the pitching staff on point. It's going to be tough against Vanderbilt. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. I think that is who we face in our in our game, too. Mm-hmm. Uh, it all depends on who who's who's dealing on the mound. That's right. And not so much who as in by name, but who as in by character. Yeah. Do and, we have the Poche that we've seen that can completely shut a team down? Or does Poche give up a run or two early and have to consistently fight back? Once he settles in that groove, he's untouchable. Yeah, I think Poche will pitch a great game. I just think he's not going to get the run support. It's, it's I, tough it, it, might be like a, it might be like a two-to-one ball game. It's tough and Poche may throw eight innings of two-hit, two-run ball, ball. May even have unearned runs on it and stuff like that. I, I, I don't think it'll be Poche. Uh, Lange and Poche, I think, are, are okay right now. The one key to this is Bregman has to get out of that slump. I think that big hit at his last at-bat to, to an RBI, if I'm not mistaken. It was two RBIs. Two RBI in, his last, in his last at-bat in the box. I think that might have been the catalyst to, to lift him out of this. We'll find out on Sunday. Absolutely. But that's all the time we have for tonight. And, of course, speaking of that at-bat, Ryan, I'm glad you mentioned it. That's what we're going to leave you with. We have a nice shot of inside the stands from the Super Regio what exactly Alex Bregman's hit was like. All I got to say is, it could be. It might be. It is. Tigers win. Tigers do indeed win. And, of course, we'll miss Hawthorne. We'll miss Hawthorne. It's like Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson right there. We'll miss Hawthorne in the box. You know, Matt and I grew up not knowing LSU Radio without Jim Hawthorne. So, it's going to be a a changing of the guard here. You know, wish you the best, Jim. With that being said, good night, America. America. Yeah. <laughs>